Good day to everyone and welcome back to another program of uh, the Coffee Break by Dr. Dharma Sena. As I promised you, this is the third video about Parkinsonism and we are going to discuss about the atypical Parkinsonism today in this video. As I mentioned earlier, even if a uh, movement disorder expert diagnose Parkinsonism. There is a, a possibility of wrong diagnosis or error of diagnosis for 10 to 15 percent. Especially when we treat as idiopathic Parkinsonism, if the patient is not responding well to levodopa and if the predominant symptoms are not uh, something like tremor and early onset of falling movement uh, or movement disorder, early onset of falls and uh, early onset of cognitive impairment would suspect the diagnosis of idiopathic Parkinsonism. In such occasions, we have to think of Parkinsonism plus syndrome. What are the conditions that we get in Parkinsonism plus syndrome? There are two types of uh, pathological involvement which can lead to Parkinsonism plus syndrome. One is alpha synuclein uh, deposition related conditions. As we discussed earlier, we know idiopathic Parkinsonism or uh, the gross Parkinsonism that we find uh, about 85% in the cases are idiopathic Parkinsonism, which is due to alpha synuclein uh, deposition of the brain uh, cells. So there are three conditions that we come across with alpha synuclein deposition. One is idiopathic Parkinsonism, number two dementia of Levy body and number three multiple system atrophy. Among these two, these three, dementia of Levy body and multi-system atrophy comes under Parkinsonism plus syndrome and uh, as we discussed earlier there are three conditions which are mainly due to tau protein involvement. For an example, we discussed about dementia in two lectures. Dementia is mainly due to uh, beta amyloid deposition and tau protein, tau triangles deposition. And uh, there are two other conditions which are involved with tau protein. They are supranuclear palsy, progressive supranuclear palsy, and corticobasal syndrome. These two and dementia, Alzheimer's dementia, they are mainly due to tau protein deposition in the uh, nerve system. So when we discuss about idiopathic Parkinsonism, uh, that is the predominant form of Parkinsonism or Parkinsonism-like syndrome. But atypical Parkinsonism is always, we have to keep in mind, because it's very difficult to diagnose straight away. And uh, there are a lot of overlap cases. For an example, the Parkinsonism plus syndrome can present with dementia as well. And uh, multi-system atrophy can present with something else which is overlapped. So we don't get the pure, pure clinical picture, the book picture in the patients. So we have to think of dementia of Levy body, multi-system atrophy, progressive supranuclear palsy and cortical corticobasal syndrome and all these things are going to be discussed in this lecture one by one and uh, explain the differences between each of them as far as uh, the theories are concerned. 
Dementia of Levy body. We are going to discuss in details now. Dementia of Levy body is a condition which shares both the signs and symptoms of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinsonism as well. It's a real challenge of diagnosis and uh, categorizing whether it is Parkinsonism or uh, dementia initially. But later on, uh, with the progression of the disease, it's a bit easy to find out that this is some sort of atypical uh, Parkinsonism. What are Levy bodies? I discussed this in my Alzheimer's uh, disease lecture, but to recap, Levy bodies are the aggregation of alpha synuclein proteins in the nerve system. This is the microscopic appearance of uh, Levy body. And as an aggregation, they cause some clumps inside the nerve cells, which are called the Levy body. The name Levy body came to these protein clumps uh, in 1913. There was a gentle, gentleman called Frederick uh, Henry Levy, who was a uh, German-born American neuroscientist who found these Levy bodies for the first time in the world. This is the German-born American scientist uh, Friedrich Levy who found Levy bodies. So these uh, protein aggregates were known as Levy bodies since uh, 1913 and uh, it interferes the neurotransmission in between the nerve cells and thereby it causes this type of pathology. So the Levy body, dementia of Levy body as a atypical Parkinsonism uh, category, it causes early onset of dementia, cognitive in, uh, impairment and uh, uh, it has the features of hallucinations especially they hallucinate about creatures small animals small human beings and uh, uh, creatures puppets and all and also there is a special feature that they act in their REM sleep for an example they combat in their sleeps and uh, they speak and they uh, respond to their dreams that is some sort of a feature and also they start falling early so if somebody with parkinsonism symptoms comes with early onset of uh, dementia cognitive impairment hallucinations and autonomic dysfunction and also uh, acting acting on their dreams we have to suspect about atypical parkinsonism that is uh, Levy body dementia is a possible diagnosis. Treatment wise, uh, the modern treatments are uh, focusing towards uh, creating some uh, chemicals to dissolve these alpha synuclein proteins in the uh, brain before they get deposited as uh, Levy bodies, but these are undergoing trial uh, stages at the moment. And uh, usual treatments for Alzheimer's dementia and uh, Parkinsonism treatments uh, help to treat Levy body dementia. And also, as I mentioned earlier, uh, physiotherapy and cognitive therapy, behavioral therapy and all these other uh, multi-disciplinary uh, uh, approach can be used in the treatment of uh, Levy body dementia. The second topic that we are going to discuss as the atypical Parkinsonism is the next alpha synuclein uh, protein involvement and that is multisystem atrophy. Multisystem atrophy can present initially uh, with uh, two different ways. Multisystem atrophy uh, Parkinsonism variant and multisystem atrophy cerebellar variant, but uh, they can overlap and the prognosis is the same 
and one can become the other later on. So uh, it's not a proper distinguishing uh, among the uh, main two categories, but uh, it's some sort of a overlap. So the main uh, pathology, main presentation of this uh, multi-system atrophy is uh, predominantly autonomic dysfunction and axial rigidity. Uh, in men, it can present early as an erectile dysfunction of unknown cause. And uh, urinary incontinence, urinary urgency, and uh, urinary retention uh, can be a result of the autonomic uh, nerve system involvement. And postural hypotension, and it can cause, I told that when there are no tremors, that is a feature of uh, park, uh, atypical Parkinsonism. But in, in idiopathic Parkinsonism, we have resting tremor. But in multisystem atrophy, one can have tremors that is actional tremor. So uh, tremor could be present in atypical Parkinsonism in multisystem atrophy. And uh, cerebellar ataxia, that is mostly due to MSAC, and uh, postural hypotension, sleep apnea. They can get sleep apnea either due to uh, peripheral cause or central cause. And also, they also uh, present with strider. And also, they also can present uh, with uh, uh, sleep disorders like Levy body uh, dementia. And uh, they can have bulbar signs as well. Their speech is affected. Their swallowing is affected. So, uh, at the uh, progression of the disease and uh, in the end stage, they can have aspiration, pneumonia and swallowing problems. Perhaps uh, they will end up with pig feeding as well. So, multisystem atrophy is also an atypical presentation of Parkinsonism. In the MRI, one can uh, have the sign of uh, famous sign of hot cross bun sign of the pons and the putaminal ring sign but uh, hot, hot cross bun sign can present in other uh, many other conditions as well. This is the picture of a hot cross bun. This is the MRI image which resembles hot cross bun sign. The third atypical Parkinsonism uh, condition that we are going to discuss is the progressive supranuclear palsy and uh, this was previously known as Steele Richardson Oliver's Key Syndrome and uh, that is the predominant uh, classical form of supranuclear palsy, progressive supranuclear palsy but there are about eight sub subtypes of this condition. Basically in these patients their downward gaze is uh, is uh, difficult and it is it is the palsy so they can't look down so they can look straight and perhaps they can look up as well but downward gaze is uh, not possible so this is the main feature of uh, this uh, steel richardson olivuski syndrome of progressive supranuclear palsy and uh, on top of that, they have the abnormal eyelid control. They can't control the blinking. Uh, they can't open eyes uh, if they close and it's difficult. So uh, because of this, they have this uh, exclamation look or the surprising look. And also they have a lack of coordination and they have axial rigidity and bradykinesia and postural instability. As a result of that, they tend to fall backward and this is called the rocket sign. And uh, their speech is uh, defected, affected and their swallowing is affected and uh, that is some sort of a pseudobulbar type of uh, uh, problem. And uh, Cognitively, they get dementia and uh, they become uh, 
incongruity of their mood. That means they don't know when to laugh and when to smile. So they laugh or smile at a point where it is not appropriate or they cry at a point where the, uh, that is not appropriate. So they cannot recognize the emotions. So uh, this is the commonest uh, type of uh, atypical Parkinsonism. And uh, for the rigidity and bradykinesia, for rigidity, we can use uh, botulinum, uh, botulinum toxin, Botox, but uh, other therapies are mostly symptomatic. And speech therapy, physiotherapy, uh, exercises and all these things contribute to the uh, management. But there's nothing to control the progression of the disease. And uh, usually they die of uh, being bed bound at the last stage of the disease. And uh, uh, the prognosis of the disease after being diagnosed is uh, would be about six to nine years. And this is also a, a tau, tau opathy, the tau protein uh, accumulation, and uh, that is the uh, pathological hallmark of this uh, condition. This is the morning glory sign of the MRI uh, scan of a progressive supranuclear palsy patient. This is the hummingbird sign. The midbrain is uh, shrunken, but the pons is spared and it resembles a hummingbird. This is the Mickey Mouse sign of the MRI of a progressive supranuclear palsy patient. Lastly, we are going to discuss about the corticobasal syndrome. Uh, actually, this is also a, a problem arising from the deposition of tau protein in the nervous system. And uh, the specificity, the special feature of this uh, corticobasal syndrome is uh, one side of the body is affected. Cerebral cortex and the uh, uh, nucleus basal area are affected with this tau protein, tau protein deposition and especially one side of the body is affected uh, with the Parkinsonism features and early cognitive impairment is a feature of uh, corticobasal syndrome and they get behavioral, behavioral changes and uh, tremors and apraxia. They don't know how to use a comb or they don't know how to use a toothbrush and uh, they have such type of a, a problem and uh, they can become aphasic as well and their executive functions are defected and they can get hyperreflexia and uh, they tend to fall and common, commonly uh, they fall. The falls are initial features of uh, all the atypical Parkinsonisms and uh, uh, you might have heard of this uh, special feature of alien limb uh, phenomena. Uh, one of the limbs, either a leg or hand mostly, they cannot control that limb and they don't know how it functions and it constantly does things but uh, the person cannot control it. This is called alien limb syndrome and uh, this is specially for this uh, corticobasal degeneration syndrome. Mm. Treatment wise uh, it is symptomatic and we cannot uh, stop the prognosis of this uh, uh, condition and once it is diagnosed uh, the prognosis will be about five to eight years and mostly they die of infections. This is the MRI scan of a corticobasal syndrome. You can see the asymmetrical atrophy of uh, posterior and parietal lobes.